Good morning, people, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Thursday, the 26th of May. I'm Derek Clark. I'm joined this lovely summer's morning by Joshua Barry. How are we doing, Joshua? Fine, yeah. Second day, third day, fourth day of no preseason, Derek. We're still here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was actually at iBrox yesterday for um, a book launch, so. Yes. Um, which was which is funny. So it feels like the summer is um moving quickly already, but no, it's not it's it's okay in Glasgow. It's not um it's 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 dry, which is I guess is a win in these parts of the world. Yeah, well it's wet down here in, in Warrington, but um we're very much in the close season, but there's still plenty to talk about, folks. Mm-hmm. Um so do get your questions in. Before we do that, as you can see the banner on our screen is the one football app, it's our sponsor of the Rangers Review Morning Briefings. You can see there, um, it's an app on your Android or iPhone device, totally free. It's your one-stop shop for all your footballing needs, so you can keep up to date with all the latest news from iBrox, as well as uh, insight into every player. You can look ahead to fixtures. Um, There's lots of Rangers Review articles on there as well. And not only Rangers, you can also keep up to date uh, with other clubs. Uh, and not only in Scotland, but also down south and abroad as well. So it's a one football app. Go check it out. Very much recommend it. Um, as I mentioned, real quality uh, insight into Rangers and further afield as well. So um, highly recommend it. Um, and as well, you can see the little ticker below you there. Um, it doesn't say Man United are rubbish, which appeared on the BBC the other day. Joshua, did you see that? I didn't, but that was wow. a good I was in a group chat and um, I was thinking, what is that? I, my first thought was, why am I United playing today? Do the season's <laughs> over, so that makes sense as to why. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely Very sensational nice. stuff on, on the BBC. But um, yeah, you can see our, our <laughs> ticket below, folks. Uh, we've got that great offer on just now, just six pounds for the next six months. You pay your six pound, and that's you sorted for half a year. So just a pound a month. It really is outstanding value. Just head over to RangersReview.co.uk forward slash subscribe. <laughs> Um, right, let's uh, we'll talk. We'll touch on your piece uh, first, Joshua, because you were at Ibrooks yesterday afternoon. We all seen the picture of you holding aloft the the, the Scottish Cup trophy. Um, what was that like, first of all? And you spoke to David Mason. He was obviously launching his Rangers history book. Um, can you tell us about your experience yesterday uh, at the stadium? I abandoned all sense of professionalism. <laughs> I was on my, one of my one of my friends actually who works at Rangers um, was there and I just said can I get a photo with it but I think I think that's why it's out anyway to get photos with um, but nonetheless so it was lighter than I thought it would be um, but it did feel very cool holding a trophy and it's got yeah. stuff so it was a good day um, always good to be in the blue room which as you know is our kind of room I put in my piece a room just drenched in Rangers history with lots of and um, lots of stuff decorating it around the walls. David Mason's book, 36 years of research. I was kind of flicking through it last night and it's really impressive. It's just some of the little details. Um, he, he's discovered new things, specifically um, an autobiography of David Hill, who played in the Scottish Cup in um, 1877 Scottish Cup final team, I think. His brother um, wrote an autobiography at the time and he was obviously around the club at its inception. and was the person that would first book pitches before Rangers played uh, Kenning Park and Ibrox. Lots of little details like that. Um, and it takes you basically, it's a complete history. So I think for it, for everyone that, that um, will be will be clued up in, on their history, it's a, a bit of a recap, but just with lots of, of new little detail and I think very comprehensive. And in terms of 36 years research, I don't think there's anyone probably better placed to kind of speak about Rangers history or write about Rangers history than that. So it was great to chat to David, who's very... Um, generous with his time and spoke about lots of things specifically was interested to see where he thought last year's title kind of ranked in comparison to the to the to the rest of rangers history and and again i put my piece probably and, and fittingly for a historian he uh he spoke about the last of walter's nine as a poet as he kind of as rivaling the 55th title and probably as i say befitting that he looks a little bit uh, beyond the the recent past as a historian uh, lots of stories about bill struth a, a great little letter from the board so sorry from bill struth to the board that i've seen in the book of him basically asking for an assistant to eventually take over but i think the boards were quite happy with mr struth in charge so we're reluctant to um 
answer his request. So lo loads and loads and loads of stuff. Um, the, the, all the information is on the uh, our website on that piece, and you can buy it. I think at the moment you can buy it directly from the club, um, but the publishing details also in there as well. So we'd, we'd definitely recommend it for yourself or for a present or whatever. And um, it was nice to be Ibrox as ever. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Um, fantastic stuff. Yeah, go and check out Joshua's piece, uh, and it looks like a cracking book to uh, read up on your on your Rangers history. It's a magnificent uh, football club, as we know, and, and the history is uh, unrivaled. Um, lots of comments coming about transfer rumours. Before we before we look at that, folks, um, as you can see in, in the title, I put in a, a piece about the, the Lowland League fears. This is a story that's sort of breaking this morning. Uh, Rangers and Celtic. Uh, uh, facing the Lowland League boot now. Apparently, it's because Hearts uh, are looking to enter the league like Rangers and Celtic uh, Colts teams did last season. Um, but the Jambos have sought their application to join the league rejected. Um, now, Chairman are due to pick which of the three would be admitted to division by the 6th of June. They've requested that division be increased. However, a request to change the rules to allow all three to participate uh, has been vetoed. The top flight trail have now been, have now told them it's either all three or none at all. So it looks like there's a bit of a impasse here at the moment, Joshua. Now, um, oh, that, I don't know where that came from, but um, I mean, for the B team, we all know that the, the benefits of playing Lowland League football last season, we've seen it with the, the players that have made the step up into the first team. Uh, cracking performance from a lot of the lads at Ten Castle in the last day of the season in the Premiership. We've seen that likes of Alex Lowry, Charlie McCann uh, make the step up. The boy uh, Divine at uh, right back as well. Mm -hmm. Leon King, of course. I think uh, this should be a, a, this should be massive if Rangers can't play in, in, in that division, play men's football next season. I think it's proved to be highly beneficial. What say you? Yeah, well, I think you look at um, the likes of Divine and McKinnon um, in particular and you know the physicality that you know we, we, the physicality players need to play in, in in top flight football these days because it's so fast, so transitional, and so quick. I think is as important as ever. And obviously, the B team will be hopefully doing a little bit about this um, in kind of longer form over the summer. But I think the benefit of the B team playing in the Lowland League and players like Alex Lowry maybe not going out on loan because obviously the rhetoric is always you know yeah. players need to find the good loan move. To, but to the other uh, other end, if you can keep players in your system, um, I, I think, and uh, and not send them out on loan, but still kind of expose them to that level of football and that physicality and playing with responsibility because you're playing against players who are fighting for bonuses or you know want to want to be promoted, um, yeah, uh, to, uh, you know from from the lowland league. I think that's probably for for big clubs a bit of an ideal situation. So we want to keep an eye on, but. As I say, I think that's something we'd like to look in a bit more, more detail over the summer is, is why this is a good model, why it seems to be working, because certainly you see with Pass and Lowry and, and, and a number of the others, as you mentioned, coming through, these players do seem quite acclimatised to um yeah. to first-team football, and you've seen that at Tyne Castle, even if it was a dead rubber game, you could see that, I think, in the last Premiership game of the season. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it, it's good for the game as well, so hopefully an agreement... Uh, can be reached. Uh, William Burns gets in touch. Lowland League teams must have had a good financial return of our team playing as well. You've got to factor in that as well. Um, the range of supporters going and, and travelling to these small little grounds that, that, that normally wouldn't get uh, the number of fans that, that they that they take there. Um, okay, let's uh, look at some transfer news. So many comments coming in here, Josh. We'll, we'll touch on this one from, from William. Uh, I know you're a big fanboy. Uh, I'd love us to get a mad back on loan. I said that of William, and I was thinking, am I? But of course, <laughs> William. Of course, I am. <laughs> he also says one of uh, Garnacho or Fernandez from uh, uh, Man United. Fernandez is a Tav type left back. Um, a mad? Would you be inclined to bring him back? Um, obviously, as you know, Derek, big fan. But um, on a wider, more serious point. And I can see Craig as well there is saying what are the key areas of recruitment. This is something that I think we'll talk about so much over the summer because at the moment it's so uncertain as to who will go out and how many players will be required because you could have a situation, I think, where a number of that first team that started it, it uh, 
Hamden Park, so I know McGregor didn't start, but for argument's sake, you look McGregor, Goldson, Balogun, um, let's say Barisic played, Davis, Kent, Kamara, I know he didn't start, but again, for argument's sake, how many of these players, whether it be contract-wise, squad cycle-wise, are going to be here next season? And then you've got to say, well, I think lone players certainly have their benefit, but Rangers also need to plan for the next squad cycle. So they need, you know, Goldson's been there for four years and has played effectively every single minute. You need someone who's going to come in and replicate that. I don't think Suter, based on his injury record, I don't think you can kind of gamble on him doing that. I think what Ahmad gives you, you know what he gives you, but as well as that, I think you've seen him acclimatise a bit to Scottish football. I think you see him attack the back post as he did with that head run. He didn't hit the target, but if Ahmad, I mean, his goals, he scored, what, four goals and hardly any time on the pitch, I think he'd, he'd give you that from the right side of the pitch whether Man United want to send them back. You know, you've got Ten Hag coming back, um, sorry, coming in. I'm sure they'll want to have a look at all players before any loan deals are decided. And and I think, you know, I was listening to uh, Robbie Nielsen speak about this, about his loan players, and he was saying it probably won't be until the, the end of the window that we know whether we can get back. And I'd imagine that extends to, to Rangers as well. So definitely wouldn't be opposed to it. I think <clears throat> it could be a, a good move for the club, but also that's an area that, of the pitch that Rangers haven't really addressed or had someone like Ryan Kent on that side for a long time and I think that's probably the priority as well as long-term planning kind of getting the spine of this next um, Rangers team because as as we say Morelos is out of contract in a year, Kent's out of contract in a year, Rebo is, Goldson's away as it stands, McGregor's away as it stands so you, I think you need the, the core first and then you can add players around that and maybe uh, loan players will be a part of that yeah, um, let's get to uh, a, f- a few more here. Uh, there's one from Peter Buchanan. We sort of touched on this uh, briefly yesterday. Good morning, Derek and Joshua. That, that Matteo Cassiera sounds a really good rumour, sounds a good fit for the club. Previously working under Dave Voss at Ajax, and Gio knows him as well. Um, yeah, apparently Rangers are interested in the, the Colombian striker. He currently playing his trade in Russia for Sochi. And um, now, of course, at the football there. Um, I think it's still suspended at the moment in Russia, um, given what's going on in, in Ukraine. Um, this is a player, I, I, I've got to admit, I don't know too much about Joshua, but all accounts, he seems like the, the, the sort of fit that, that would fit the Rangers model. 25 years of age, Colombian forward. Um, sounds, like someone, sounds like someone we already have at the club, 25 years. <laughs> yeah. A front three of Allegria, uh, Morelos and, and, yeah. and Cassiera, a, a Colombian front three. But um, yeah, it certainly seems at a reasonable price as well. And it's, it's, I guess it's, it's someone would imagine there'll be a number of players linked throughout the summer. But could you see a player of this calibre coming to the club? I don't know much, much about him. Um, but what I think, to, to kind of take your question on a tangent, I think what you will see with these players that are linked is players in something of a Van Bronckhorst model or, or his style of football. So yeah. that's why I think, although, you know, I don't think, we don't know if Rangers missed out, quote unquote, on Daniel Doikai. But certainly when you look at his profile in terms of the, the height he likes to defend high up the pitch, um, how aggressive he can be, his um, propensity to win 1v1 duels, you can see how Van Bronckhorst would look at a player like that and think, I like him, I would like him to come and play for my football team. And obviously, football clubs with their scouting departments are so vast these days. And, you know, theoretically, it could be true that Rangers have watched said player, but Rangers have probably watched, you know, tens of thousands of players in the last year. And I guess that's what a scouting department is for. So it'll be interesting to see over the summer, um, you know, how how many players come out that you you, you can see kind of a clear collaboration um, happening between between the player and Van Bronco. So yeah. I, I, personally I'm really excited to see how um Van Broncos can can develop a style of football with his squad because again, as we've discussed before, this isn't his squad and the players he added in January, you when you look at um, you know, Ramsey and Diallo, how much were they you know, how, how much were they dependent on who it, whoever was was at the club. I, I think a player like Ramsey, obviously financially, it was something the club could do probably because of the situation he was in at Juventus. Diallo, maybe a little bit more of a a, a situation where the club knew about the player. They could perhaps get him on loan and when Van Bronco started to play with wingers, it was, it was perfect. 
but also I, I, I don't know, I think especially in that um, midfield role, not the Jack and Lundstrom area, but a line-up where Kamara's kind of played, I think that's an area of the pitch where Van Bronckhorst hasn't really got any players who can do everything he wants them to do in terms of be a bit of an all-action number eight, go beyond. I think Aribo can do that to his degree and, you know, his, his underlying creative numbers, I think, ended up as the best in the Europa League as XG uh, assisted. Um, but in terms of someone who can kind of break with pace in central areas. So, and that's what you, I guess you've kind of seen Scott Wright do as a, as a result um, in a little bit of an ad hoc way. He's been developed in something of a hybrid role coming in field and done so very well. So, a long-winded way of saying... I think it'll be really interesting to see in pre-season how Van Bronco starts to develop his style with his players. And I think as well on that, it's going to be interesting and important to see how he sort of decreases the dependency on, on playing directly into the, the attacking areas of the pitch. That was certainly in the two cup finals with Goldson's diagonals. When they didn't work, sometimes Rangers looked a little bit limited. So the midfield for me is a, a really important area this this summer um, because I think Van Bronco needs a different style of player to play his football yeah uh thanks to barry Kerr as well who corrects me here the russian league is still ongoing boys scored a hat trick at the weekend don't think clubs are allowed to do business with with russian clubs um so thanks for that uh, uh updating me there barry um yeah aldo sort of touches it in your point there um joshua do you guys think we'll be signing any dutch players surely geo and davos know some young dutch talent we can sign cheap and develop that is certainly a market you'd imagine it makes sense joshua that it's a market they know, um, and it, I can see a number of players, not necessarily being, being Dutch, but players from that division, the Eredivisie, and, and, and players have worked with the first eight losses, get a track record in developing youth players. So I'd imagine there'll be a uh, a number of players making their way over to Ibrox, which is exciting. It's, it's, it's uh, almost reminiscent of when Advocat was in charge, of course, um, bringing players over exciting players you might not have necessarily seen uh, as much but it's a new era of course uh, there's no doubt about it um let's talk about some of the other uh, questions that are coming in a lot of questions with regards to connor goldson uh, folks people asking what's happening um i've got to admit i've not heard anything uh, as yet i noticed there wasn't an interview with him at the end of the, the scottish cup final um for me joshua <laughs> It's a strange one. Can you see him playing for Rangers next season? For me, it's, it, there's obviously an impasse with regards to the contract talks where player the player wants something and the club is only prepared to give him something and there's, there's a bit of middle <laughs> ground there. Um, would you be tempted to to give him what he wants and, and have him stay at the club? He has been a, so resolute and, and so robust over the, the four years that he's been here. Uh, preferentially, of course, but I think, you know, Van Bronco said after the Europa League, I think it was after the Europa League final, maybe the Scottish Cup final, there was a small chance of him staying in. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think on any occasion, having uh, the, the num numerous times that we speak to Van Bronco at press conferences or in other interviews, he doesn't he doesn't play the game. He doesn't say things he doesn't mean. He's, he's straight to the point. I think you've got to take the manager at, at his word on that one. Um, and of course, Goldson could probably earn better money elsewhere. And you've also got to consider, you know, family situations. Uh, he lived in it was Brighton before. Maybe his family. Won't want the to West Midlands, yeah, he's from the yeah. West Midlands. You just don't know, I guess. And and also, sometimes maybe it's a good the players view it as a good, the right time to leave a football club after four years. The intensity of playing for Rangers, one more contract. You can see it, you can understand it from that point of view, but you can also understand it from the point of view of Rangers supporters who want him to stay. And um, the fact that, you know, he's played all these games in four years. If you give him another four years until he's 33, you'd probably bank on him. Kind of doing the same again. Um, yeah, I, I, I find it hard to to see a, 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 any situation in which he is at the club next season just because there's been no noise to suggest he will. And he's obviously not seen the contract up to this point. So... Yeah, that's not a problem position for Rangers, but you look at Hollander's injury record over these three years, not great, especially when you take this season into consideration. Obviously, Bassi, there's a lot of attention around him given his two performances in the final and his and his year so far. Leon yeah. Balogun again, now a year older and also hasn't played all that football, much football in the second half of the season. John Suter coming in, I think he was brilliant in the cup final, but again missed a lot of this or a fair chunk of the season's injury 
and one of Goldson's, I guess, what people will remember him for, Derek, is always playing Falkirk away, wherever it would be. You know, he always played. And I was reading an interview with Stephen Gerrard um, the, the other day about how players like Kent and Goldson get angry if they don't play. They just want to. They just want to play all the time. Um, and and I think that is something that is kind of taken a little bit for granted in the modern game because um, he was so available, so readily available, and 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 also a fantastic defense. You know. 13 goals conceded in the league last season. Some fantastic performances to get Rangers to the Europa League final within a penalty kick or two of winning the Europa League. And yes, you can say he made mistakes, but what what player who's playing at that level isn't going to make mistakes? Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's if you want to sign a defender who's not going to make a mistake, I don't know of any. Maybe Van Dijk, I don't know. Does he, does he, but even then, I'm sure he still makes the odd mistake for Liverpool. So, I think um, <clears throat> Goldson will be a big, big miss when he got when he goes. And as we said before, the Conor Goldson the Rangers signed, the one that leaves is a much better player, a much more developed player, and he signed in for three million back then. So how much will it be to replace a player who, as you say, in that Europa League semi final against Yusuf Poulsen, a player who's played seventy times for for Denmark, been a key player for RB Leipzig for a number of years? Goldson absolutely bullied him. You forget how actually physically big and strong he is as well yeah. as all his technical quality. So obviously there will be a way to replace him and. It's not, you know, it's not the absolute end of the world, but I think it is important to contextualise the fact that he's been the the kind of backbone of, of this Rangers squad for the last um, four years, and it will be it will be difficult to replace him. Um, I don't think it's a case of as some comments kind of some people have said maybe after certain games that they'll be happy to to see him gone. I think that's a bit harsh. Yeah, I know he's getting a bit of criticism for um, the, the 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 goal in the Europa League final, but for me, he's, he's someone that. He, you will miss when he leaves, but you've got to trust that the coaching staff um, to, to replace it and recruit well uh, in the summer. That's what makes it a very interesting uh, summer ahead. Um, okay, folks, that'll do us there. Thanks to everyone with uh, their comments. Sorry if I didn't get to uh, your question on the chat, um, but thanks again to uh, everyone getting involved. Remember, just a reminder on the ticker down there, we've got that great offer on the website, just £6 for six months' worth of content. <laughs> head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe for all the details. And um, we'll be back again tomorrow. Um, but until then, enjoy.